in this video, we're going to take a look at big O uh, notation uh, lab. So in this uh, example, what I have is basically this uh, function that has just big O. I just want to show you what of one looks like. So um, if you have this example where you're creating a variable, for example, name devdeki, that is O of one, because this line, no matter how many times you execute this function, this particular line is going to be executed only one time. So its, it's time complexity is always going to be one. So it's a constant time uh, for thousand input. It's going to be thousand times. So it's going to be called. It's going to be exact same. Okay. So now next example is how you see basically O of n. So O of n actually applies on, if you see a loop, that's actually where you start to look at closely. So if you look at this example for i in 0 to 10, in this case, the loop is going to be repeated 0 to 10. Every single time when you call this loop, it's going to be repeated 0 to 10. Okay, so that means if the 10, if 10 is n, okay, this uh, algorithm's time complexity is going to be O of 10 or O of n. 10 in this case, because it's going to execute 10 times um, or 11 times, basically. But O of n is basically, uh, you, you always mention or you always talk in generic n and m terms. You don't talk like, you know, 11 or 12 or anything like that. It's either 1, n, n square, n log n or log n. Okay, so that's how you actually do it. Well, for example, this one, this line, this particular, these three, 33, 34, and 35, these lines are going to get, for a single call, it's going to get executed number of times. Number is defined by the loop uh, that's going to run. So that's why it's actually n. And reason I'm, I'm emphasizing on like, you know, these concepts more and more, so you understand how actually the basic relationship goes. So if you have one loop, and that loop is uh, going through uh, each step, uh, and basically executing and repeating itself, that means if, if it's repeating n times, then it's O of n. Okay, now moving on, O of n squared. Okay, n squared is basically loop inside loop. So for this example, what's going to happen is um, if you go in internal for loop, this inside for loop is going to be executed n times for every value of i. So that means for every value, so when i is 0, uh, this is going to ex be executed twice. When i is 1, this is going to be executed twice again. Then i is 2, it's going to be executed twice again. So that's that's why actually it's got two loop and two loops are are basically um, inside nested inside each other. So that creates the situation where you have O of n squared because n times uh, n times two or not n times two n squared basically is what the what the time complexity for this is. Okay. Now n time m is similar, but you have loop inside loop inside loop. And uh, for in the internal loops run for every single output for the external loop. So that's how O of n, O of n times uh, n to the power m works, OK? It's not times, it's n to the power m, n to the power 2. That's what it is. It's different, um, OK? For n square, it's like you know similar, but like you know n to the power n to the power m is actually different. So for that reason, okay, uh, but you get the point. Um, so yeah, so if you see a loop, just remember that loop is n. So if it's loop inside loop, that's n squared. If it's loop inside loop inside loop, that's n cube. And if it's like you know four or five, n times n q n to the power m. That's what it is. Now. Binary search example, I've actually omitted this because we're going to cover that one in another section. Binary search is a very popular topic. There are several uh, interview questions uh, that um, are asked uh, related to binary search. So I want to dedicate a whole section for binary search. So when we get to that, uh, that's what we're going to actually discuss. But but the way when binary search works is basically it divides your um, 
data into two steps and each step divides their data into half. So data is constantly getting half and half and half. So you're only working on a subset of data. That complexity is log n. Okay, so if let's say if you were to compute the sign complexity for this big O, in this one, the, the most significant is this n to, n to the power m. So the time complexity for this guy, this big O function is going to be O n to the power m, because that's the one that's going to grow significantly for the given input versus all the others. So that's why we're going to ignore all the others. So hope, hope you're actually clear how to compute um, time complexity. And we're going to see like, you know, with when, you, when we go through all these uh, interview questions, how we're going to see how uh, to compute um, basically time complexity at that time. And that's where you're going to get like a real practical example of how to compute it. Okay. But as long as the concept is clear, let's move forward. If you want to watch it again, I would actually recommend you watching it again, because this is a uh, this looks an easy concept, but it actually takes a bit time to like, you know, absorb. Okay. So, all right, when you're ready, let's move on to the next topic where we're going to discuss arrays briefly. I mean, everyone knows about arrays, so we're going to discuss them briefly and then we jump straight into solving interview questions. Okay. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.